Operation Varsity is probably one of the most successful operations during World War II that you've probably not heard much about. I believe this is the result of its own success, as other airborne operations were less successful and gave more for people to discuss. We will now hear Operation Varsity discussed by one of its commanders, Major General Matthew Ridgway, commander of the 18th Airborne Corps. Purposes of this meeting, gentlemen, is to ensure that we have a fine and complete mutual understanding of what we propose to do in Operation Varsity. The enemy situation in the large, in the area in which we're interested, is generally as follows. Army Group H, with 2nd Paracorps on the north, with 6th, 7th, and 8th Paradivisions in that order from north to south. The 180th Division in the general basal area, north of the Ypres Siphon Canal, and the 190th South. The 116th Panzer and the 15th Panzer Grenadier with divisions somewhere is backing them up, probably in the coastal area. These divisions are almost without exception old friends of ours. They've been badly battled, and we have complete confidence in finishing the job on this occasion. The scheme of maneuver for the 21 Army Group to which this Corps is assigned for this operation, provides for an assault by two armies abreast, the second British on the right, the first Canadian on the left, the ninth U.S. Army on the right and the second British. The attack of this Corps will be by air with the sixth British and 17th U.S. Airborne Divisions in that order from north to south. The mission of the Corps is to land by parachute and glider on D-Day during daylight in the area generally north and northwest of Basel. Disrupt the hostile defense by the rapid seizure of key terrain in order rapidly to deepen the bridgehead seized by the assault crossing of the British 12th Corps in the Bislick area. With complete confidence Born of our overwhelming superiority in artillery, in air, and in the morale of our troops, there is no shadow of doubt as to the complete successful outcome of this operation. General Ridgway was right to have such confidence, as Operations Varsity and Plunder were two of the most successful operations carried out by the Allies in Northwest Europe during World War II crossings of the Rhine were carried out well before the airborne had actually dropped into Germany. The lesson of what can happen to airborne forces if they are dropped too far from their land support was learned during Operation Market Garden, and therefore was switched for varsity and plunder. These dual operations allowed the Allies to establish a large bridgehead on the far side of the Rhine, allowing the advance into Germany to continue and helping to bring an end to the war. Now check out this conversation I had with Stephen Wright to learn more about Operation Varsity.